Hello everyone and welcome to my studio. Today I'm going to share with you how to paint this beautiful room portrait. I found this picture on an interior decorator site that I follow on Instagram. Some of you are probably wondering where would I even start with this painting <laughs> and I can understand that. It has a lot going on. The perfect place to start this painting is the Chinese face and that's because it's in the foreground. It's important to start by painting the details first of the flowers and the vase and work on the background later. I'm starting with the family of reds. I'm using a mixture of quinacridone rose, permanent red, and cadmium red. I'm also adding some azo yellow deep and azo yellow light. These are cadmium free substitutes for cadmium yellows. The lilies have green stamens, and so I'm using permanent green and cadmium lemon to paint them. To paint some of the other flowers and the little orange flowers in the upper left hand corner, I'm using azo yellow deep, some yellow ochre, and to give them dimension, I'm adding a dot of matter lake deep at the bottom of each one of those flowers. Now for the blue flowers. I'm using cobalt blue and also cerulean blue. It's important to have warm and cool blues and warm and cool reds throughout this painting. That's what's going to give it its vibrancy. Also remember to leave little bits of white in between almost all of your brush strokes. This painting and this, this reference photo is very intricate. There's a lot going on and a lot of repetition in the color families from foreground to background. And this is what makes it so challenging to paint. But if you can focus on making small strokes of paint that imitate detail without copying it, you'll be successful with your painting. I'm adding dark blue to the center of the light blue flowers. I'm going to do that a lot during this painting process. Adding a dark inside of the light makes the flowers look more three-dimensional and it also makes them look light and airy. So this room designer has repeated the blue in the flowers into a pillow that's resting on the orange sofa, the orange and red sofa, and it's the girl with the pearl earring, which is a really neat idea. The idea of repeating colors throughout this painting is a really fun one and it's not traditional. It's not like painting a landscape where you'd want to gray down the blue of something that's further in the distance from the blue that's in the foreground. You want to make it just as bright and just as colorful and that will create a lot of harmony and I think that that's what this room is all about. My intent with this painting is to show that the blue in the pillow is just as vibrant and lively as the blue in the flowers. I want the viewer to keep moving around and around the painting through a web of color, blue to blue to blue, red to red to red, yellow to yellow, and so on. I'm working on filling out the bouquet of flowers with soft hues of warm and cool reds, and I'm also starting to add the green stems. If you'll notice in the drawing, instead of making a single line for each stem, I made parallel lines so that I created a space to put my line of With the amount of red that's in this painting, it's really important for me to get my greens right. And I don't want my greens to be quite as colorful as the reds and yellows and blues. These eucalyptus leaves have a lot of blue in them. And so I am adding cobalt blue and some ultramarine and also cerulean to make them a bluish green. I'm also balancing that with yellow highlights. Each eucalyptus leaf has a line down the center of it, and so I'm making one side of the leaf a yellowy green and the other side a more bluish green. I also want to make sure that when I add the green to the vase, where the vase has green details, that I use a really bright luminous green. So I've added to my palette today phthalo green, and that's what I'm using on the vase. With all the pattern that's going on on the vase, I'm just making impressions of the colors and how they go from left to right, 
and circle around the vase. Now it's time to zoom in and work on the sofa. I want to make it look more three-dimensional, so I'm adding Matter Lake Deep and Cobalt Blue to the shadow. For the creases in the orange blanket on the back of the sofa, I added some cadmium red. Now I want to continue to fill out the vase with the rest of the blues, pinks, and turquoise colors before I start to add the yellow. The reference photo that shows the vase shows it very dark on the left and pretty light on the right side. So I'm translating this into color differences instead, and I'm going to put a warm dark yellow on the left side using Azo Yellow Deep, or you could also use Cadmium Yellow Deep, and a little bit of yellow ochre. And then on the right side, I'm going to make it a cooler, lighter yellow with Cadmium Lemon. As I fill out the yellow, I'm being careful to always leave a little bit of white around each one of the shapes that I've added of blue and pink. Now I'm starting to layer my paints. I'm adding a little bit of cool violet to the top left side of the vase and I'm going over some of the details of the vase with darker accents. Where there's blue, I'm adding a little bit of darker blue in the center. Where there's pink, I'm adding some darker red and so on. I'm also going to darken some of the yellow on the left hand side of the vase, not all the way to the far left but more like the left third. As I'm layering, I'm still being very conscious of leaving the little bits of white paper showing through because I want my painting to have that special sparkle that you can only get with watercolor by leaving little bits of white. Now for a few more greens and time to paint that parquet wood floor. I really had to think about how to paint that floor and how to draw it. I actually drew it and erased it a few times. I decided to just make a few lines to show the parquet design and not draw them all in. That's because there's already so much detail in this painting and to me the floor wasn't very important. I really wanted to emphasize the vase, the rug with the zebra stripes, the sofa, and that beautiful yellow dresser in the background. I'm adding shadows to the rug and underneath the sofa using cobalt blue plus quinacridone rose plus yellow ochre. For the shadows in the very back behind the sofa, I'm using Prussian blue, which is a really deep sort of an indigo blue. I made the rug in the foreground on the lower right hand corner bigger than it is in the photo, and I made it red with little bits of white, of course. I just wanted it to have sparkle. But I made it bigger because I wanted that shape to balance out the smaller shape of the red sofa in the background. I felt that for the purpose of design, it just seemed better to have a larger red shape in the foreground and a smaller red shape in the background. Now I'm adding the shadow to the yellow dresser using yellow ochre. Here you'll see that I'm emphasizing the shadows in the background and I really want to make that yellow dresser pop forward and give the sofa a sense of space. I'm using cool violets with ultramarine blue and burnt sienna in the very dark places and in the lighter places I'm adding a bit of permanent red violet and I'm also making the stand that the vase is sitting on more of a warm brown. If you'll notice in the reference photo it's really dark, it's, it's almost black and that would have taken away from the colors in the rest of the painting. I made the shadow with ultramarine blue and matter lake deep. I'm really liking how this painting is looking so far and I want to be careful with it. I don't want to ruin it by overworking it. So I'm building up my darks very slowly and still keeping in mind that I want to leave little spaces of white. I know I keep repeating that but it's so important to the look of this overall painting. For the darks and the shadows, the really dark darks, I'm mixing my own dark with ultramarine blue and matter lake and in some cases also some burnt sienna. The vertical lines in this painting play a key role in the design. So I'm taking a band of, of warm um, yellow ochre 
for this left side and another band. This one has some permanent red violet mixed in with it. And I left some white in between for now. I'm being very careful when I put the background in behind the flowers that I leave white spaces around them, of course. I wanted to fill out with a little more green. I feel like my bouquet of flowers is still too scattered looking and I want it to be more cohesive in the center. So I'm adding more greens and I'm layering them from light to dark. For the dark greens, I'm using Hooker's Green Deep and Ultramarine Blue and a little bit of Burnt Sienna. We're now to the point of this painting where I'm really doing all of the finishing touches and the darks are sort of like the glue that holds this whole composition together, but they have to be added very carefully. So take your time at this stage. Next it's time to add that amazing green wall. I used Cadmium Lemon and Permanent Green Deep and then a little bit of Azo Yellow Deep as well. Such fun colors in this painting. I just love it. And I love how the red flowers are really set forward by putting the green behind them. For the upper right hand corner I put yellow ochre and a lot of water and for the turquoise wall I used cerulean blue and just a hint of cadmium lemon. Notice how having a little tiny bit of yellow in that turquoise really makes the blue flowers come forward and the turquoise sink back. That's because turquoise is next to green on the color wheel and so the green leaves that are next to the turquoise sort of fade into it, even with the little bits of white that are left around it. I'm continuing to add just a few more dark accents, small little bits of paint mixed with Matter Lake and Ultramarine Blue. It just helps to finish out my painting and add more of that impression of detail. When I add finishing darks, they're all very specific colors. And so I sort of go around the painting thinking, okay, where do my reds need some accent? Where do my blues need some accent? And so on. And I'll add small amounts of dark reds to the reds and dark blues to the blues and so on. But they're very carefully placed. I'm going to add some Matter Lake to the rug on the floor too. And I keep referring back to the reference photo and looking for cues of where there might be more darks added. I'm going to glaze a little bit of cadmium lemon onto that green wall for some extra glow. I'd like to take this time to thank you for joining me today while I show you how to paint a Chinese vase in a room portrait. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a few things along the way. Please remember to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you don't miss out on any future painting videos. I'd also like to invite you to have a look at my Patreon website. The link is in the description on my YouTube channel. There you'll find more tutorials that also include reference photos, design diagrams, and a drawing that you can print and copy. Some of the subscriptions also come with an original painting of your choice either a watercolor or an oil, mailed to you.